Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, think riding your bike is enough? No, you can't call yourself a proper cyclist until, well, you'll find out. We've also got an update from Hank's Veganuary, news about cycling shorts and some positive doping news. Kind of positive. This week in the world of cycling, we learned who would win a race between someone in their hardest gear and someone in their easiest. You're right, mate. All right, mate. How's it going? Yeah, I'll see you at the top. <laughs> see you at the top. I'll catch you back up. Unfortunately, whilst we know the answer to this burning question that we've all been asking ourselves, you are going to have to wait until the video comes out. But don't worry, because we've also learned this week just what Daniel Lloyd's most embarrassing moment on a bike really looks like. Ooh. <laughs> I, I was about to say a huge thank you to Flanders Classics for allowing us to share that clip with you all, but I'm not sure I really want to thank them. I'll say instead then, a huge thank you to Flanders <laughs> Classics for letting us show that yeah, clip. Yeah, for allowing us all to relive that amazing moment in my career. <laughs> uh, finally this week, we learned that Annemiek van Fleurten is back to doing what she does best because in a single ride last week, she took 85 QOMs. Uh, so she rode 220 kilometers with the Mobistar Classic Squad and picked up one QOM every four minutes for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she is a cyclist and a half. Well, she, she is, yeah. However, I bet in her early days as a cyclist, she failed to unclip and fell unflatteringly to the floor. Because I was reading through the comments underneath last week's show, and many people's most embarrassing moment was exactly that. It's almost like a rite of passage to becoming a fully fledged proper cyclist, isn't it? It is. So, can you really call yourself a proper cyclist, a real cyclist, a true cyclist, until you've fallen off because you've forgot to unclip. I missed the beanbag. I mean, it's just inevitable really, isn't it? Like, no matter what age you start, it's gonna happen to you at some point when you least expect it. Hmm. So, we have come up with a few more rites of passage that you have to have gone through before you can call yourself a proper cyclist. Now, please bear in mind that these are very much tongue in cheek, but number two is bonking. Yeah. Bonking, hitting the wall, complete glycogen depletion, whatever you want to call it. It's something else which hits you when you least expect it. And my word, can it hit you hard? It hits you really hard, yeah. doesn't it? I would say that once you've bonked once, you'll make sure that you never bonk again. But unfortunately, in this instance, it's certainly something that's happened to me far too often, even after the first one, even if it never quite hits you in the same way as it does the very first time it happens to you. No, well, I don't think any of us will ever forget your first bonking <laughs> story, which sounds weird, but anyway, you ended up in an ambulance. I did. Basically. I did, yeah. yes. Now, my first experience wasn't quite that bad, but like you, it has happened to me many times since. What was the last time? Uh, hmm, long enough ago that you can't remember. Definitely steamboat gravel race. Oh, was it? I, yeah, I blew really badly there. And then weirdly, uh, I had a packet of crisps and uh, Felt way better, and um, I bet you did. That yeah. was all it took. I always need sugar. So next up, you're a proper cyclist when you've been dropped. Yeah, which means that Ollie Bridgewood can definitely <laughs> call himself a proper cyclist. Definitely, Ollie Bridgewood. Although to be fair, we all can really. I mean, well, I can, lost yeah. count of the number of times that I was dropped in races, and I think it's happened to almost anyone that's ever done a group ride. So maybe we need to change it from got dropped to been on a group ride. Yeah, or maybe we just drop. That one all together. Because <laughs> I don't think you have to have done a group ride to call yourself a cyclist, but unless you have, you can't have been dropped. Agreed. All right, let's move on then. Uh, how about you've got a bike or had a bike worth more than your car at the time or now? Yeah, well, you well know, Dan, that uh, it's been well documented, in fact, that my Ford Focus estate was worth about a fifth of the price of the bike that I transported in the back of it. Although actually I did have to pay for the Ford, whereas the bike technically was, was free with the mm. team. However, we both got into the sport at a young age, didn't we? When budgets were small and most of it went on our bikes. But there are plenty of people who get into cycling at a later age where you may well have you know, been fortunate enough in life that you can actually afford a really nice, expensive car and therefore it's worth more than any bike that you could buy. 
My most expensive bike in my garage at the moment is still worth more than my current car. Well, so. yes, no, I'm exactly the same as well. Mm. But. Well, maybe we should have a poll on this one. Is your bike worth more or less than your car? Now, you can take that over on the GCN app. Hopefully there'll be uh, something on your screen right now to link you over to that. A, yes, B, no, or C, I don't own a car. Right, now we talked a little bit about falling off, getting stuck in your pedals like a beetle on its back, but it does feel like crashing is something that happens to all of us at some stage, isn't it? In fact, do you need to have the scars to prove it? I've got the false teeth to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and being British, they've ended up looking far better than they were before. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite happy with my new false teeth compared to the old ones I had. Uh, but I do also have plenty of battle scars, which I'm not going to show you now. We well, don't need to, Dan, because one of the first ever GCM videos, bizarrely, is your top 10 scars. Oh, blimey, fact, yes. Should we have a little clip? I was about to say highlight, but it's, you know, a clip. Every scar's got its own story. Oh, by the way, I'm Daniel Lloyd, sorry. I've been a professional cyclist for 10 years. Now I'm doing more of this kind of stuff, like, you know, presenting. That was only eight years ago, but the person on that video looks like my son, doesn't it? Yes, basically. <laughs> Anyway, what do you lot reckon? Do you need a battle scar to be a proper cyclist? What do you think? Mm. Oh, I think so, yeah. Let us know in the comments section below. But, I mean, you don't need to fall off, but it's almost impossible to do a decent amount of cycling without having some sort of crash or at least something that leaves a scar on your body, even if it's your pedals flipping back on you. Well, right, yeah, or taking your pedals off, in fact, and losing the skin off your knuckles. It's like, it's the law of averages, isn't it? Mm. Perhaps there are cyclists out there that have managed to stay completely scar-free. Maybe they are just called skillful as opposed to cyclists, or indeed lucky. But um, anyway, back to teeth now, another rite of passage, biting off more than you can chew. You end up on a monster ride out for hours longer than you planned, and you're not entirely sure that you're actually gonna be able to make it home. So to be bad, you have to be bad at planning to be a proper cyclist. No, I mean, some of us are, but no, sometimes you, plan a route and then you just decide to do a little bit extra, don't you? But you just neglect to notice that your extra bit includes two mountain passes. And then once you've embarked on that, you then realize that you're already knackered and that it's gonna take you four hours to get to the end, but it actually gets dark in two hours. Hmm. Modern technology though, does make it more difficult for that to happen, doesn't it? Cause you've got GPS, so you've yeah. got no excuse if you use a route planning software like Kamut, for example. And if you've got your phone with you now, you could always order an Uber or something else to get you through if you've completely bombed. But True. back in the day, it wasn't as easy as that, was it? In fact, once I got lost while doing a lap of Lake Tahoe in California. Now I'm not very familiar, Dan, with the roads of Lake Tahoe, but it does strike me that when you're doing a lap of a lake, it's quite hard to get lost, surely. You just keep the lake on, <laughs> well, on one yeah. side. The, well, I must have been daydreaming at a point because I was just cycling around. I could see the lake most of the way through it. And then I just realized that I hadn't seen the lake for about 10 kilometers. And so I had to do a U-turn at that point, retrace my steps, about at which kilometers. point- yeah, four or 10 kilometers, yeah. yeah. At which point it was starting to get rather dark. I didn't have a GPS. I didn't have a phone with me, actually. I mean, it was 2004. I did have a phone, but I had a British SIM card and the roaming charges were extortionate and I'm very tight. Uh, was and still am. Uh, speaking of which, do you need to be tight in order to call yourself a proper cyclist? <laughs> There's a lot of tight cyclists out there, aren't there? There are a lot, yeah, it's true. But anyway, only joking. Okay, what about this? You can only call yourself a proper cyclist after you found yourself explaining jargon and acronyms to a non-cyclist in your life. Yeah, or at a party to obviously uninterested people. To obviously disinterested to everyone but you, because you are so interested in your own type of conversation. So interested in fact that you fail to notice the glazing over of the eyes of the person <laughs> that you're talking to. I've no doubt I've been there and done it, probably multiple times, even though I was oblivious to it at the time. Although I probably should have realized when I stopped getting invited to parties in about 2001. Yeah, it's true. I mean, that, that might not have been the reason why you, you got stopped. Oh, right. Buying. Yeah, thanks, Si. You think it was some other reasons why I stopped getting invited. <laughs> yeah, don't mention me. Uh, in summary, then, what we're basically saying is that to be able to call yourself a proper cyclist, you have to have gone through a number of fairly horrible, painful, frightening experiences, as well as having bored the pants off people at a party. Exactly that. That's exactly what. No, we're not saying that at all. I mean, going back to what I said at the start of the show, these points have been very much tongue in cheek. Yes. And we think that actually the definition of being a proper cyclist is very simple. To be a proper cyclist, you ride a bike for no other reason than wanting to ride a bike. Precisely.
That's it. Right, now we will pass over to a man who has undoubtedly bonked, got battle scars, definitely bore people at parties, <laughs> and also got lost. It's Hank with an update on his veganuary. I'm into my second week as a vegan. Can you believe it? I mean, I've done two weeks. I've got to say, I never thought I'd get to this point without breaking, but I'm still here. The reason being is that I've been experimenting. I've been thinking outside the box. I've been looking for vegan alternatives to the normal foods I eat. And I've really been experimenting in the kitchen. So I've made a macaroni cheese, vegan edition. I've done a curry. I've done a linguine. Yeah, all these foods I wouldn't have never dreamt of cooking, but yet going vegan, trying the plant-based diet has made me think about how to do different things differently. And to be honest, they've been really tasty. All is going well. I haven't broken any rules and I'm still on the right track. And also, I got my blood profile components. So, uh, so uh, in the last episode of our vegan video, we'll be able to go through all the results and see if the plant-based diet has changed any of those profiles. But ultimately, it's all going pretty good. Next up, GCN Inspiration. Your chance to win one of three prizes each and every week by just uploading your inspirational cycling photos or videos to the GCN app, at which point Sai and I pick our favourite three each week. And that's what we've done this week, of course. So in third place is... It is this amazing photograph uh, somewhere in Western Germany's mountains, apparently. And it was sent in by Tagamemnon. I like that, Dan, very much. If, if you're going to be riding at the moment in the Northern Hemisphere, like, you'd just try to find I can't help moment. but think that if that was a road in the UK, you'd be off at the first point at which you tried to turn the bike in any direction. Ice. Yeah. Well, yeah, there is that. In Germany, they do seem to do roads better, don't they, in terms of looking after them when it's sub-zero. Yes, that is true. Also, you can get grippy ice. I found. Well, we've discussed this, I think, on the GCN show before. Probably. But yes, grippy ice. Who knew there was such a thing? But in Stockholm, there right. is. I also remember you were just as excited last time we spoke about <laughs> <laughs> well, Anyway, we... yeah. uh, well done to you. Uh, the third prize this week was a GCN maintenance book. Whoa. So that will be winging its way to you. Uh, second prize is also a maintenance book, along with a GCN Word logo t-shirt in black and gold. And it goes to Sam Largus. A uh, photo taken somewhere in Singapore on an early morning weekend ride. Nice. I can't help but think that both these two uh, winners are proper cyclists because neither of them know whereabouts they are in their country. The <laughs> first one said uh, somewhere in Western Germany mountains and the next one says photo taken somewhere in Singapore. <laughs> I've just <laughs> gone out on a ride and got lost and taken a photo that looks ra rather nice. It does look rather nice, doesn't it? In fact, it looks more than rather nice. It looks utterly inspirational from where I'm sat right now. So uh, thank you very much for sending that one in, Sam. First prize winning a cool grey hoodie, a Word Logo t-shirt in black and gold, and a maintenance book, which uh, I just haven't even got my hands on one. They've been They're in such like high demand. they horse excrement. Like yeah. That. Yes. Well, better than that, I think. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we digress. First place this week goes to this incredible photo sent in by Jay Ansell. Believe it or not, that is actually from the United Kingdom, Dan. Mm, I know. Incredible. I couldn't believe uh, it either. North Wales, Ross-on-Sea, in fact. Um, not a bad commute, they put. No. Well, is I mean, it? it looks like quite a bumpy commute, potentially a very wet one, but that is a sunrise and a half, isn't it? It is, and that wasn't the only photo. He actually, or she, actually uploaded four. I'm not sure if it's a he or she, Jay Ansell. Um, these are the other three, which are if not just as good, maybe even better than the original one. Yeah. So a thoroughly deserving winner this week. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I've ever seen a sunrise that good. Well, I don't think I've ever seen so speechless, so it must be no. great. <laughs> All right, don't forget to get involved for next week by uploading your photos or videos to the GCN app. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we'll start with news of Cycling Shorts. Yes, two cycling clothing companies have just announced steps to reduce their environmental impacts. They have. So we are going to start with Endura, who planted 1.3 million trees last year with their reforestation partners in Mozambique, and they are on target to become carbon negative 
by 2024. Awesome. The brand have, they say, looked at all parts of their business and in addition to carbon offsetting, are looking at clothing production itself. Great stuff. Uh, Santini, meanwhile, have changed all their plastic bags and swapped them for compostable bags for their technical clothing. Yeah, good news there. Uh, it's kind of hard buying cycling stuff, isn't it, if you're looking to reduce your own mm. environmental impact. But more and more brands are increasingly taking it into consideration, which is very definitely a good thing. It's a very good thing, isn't it? Uh, now, moving on, we reported this news on the Racing News Show last week, but the legendary French track sprinter Gregory Bourget has announced his retirement. Uh, so a nine-time world champion was part of the super-dominant French team sprint, but the only thing missing from his palmarès is an Olympic gold medal, unfortunately. Yeah. He must have been gutted that Tokyo got postponed, didn't he? Mm. I feel his pain as well, because that's one of the things that's missing from my mind. Many things as well. Yeah. One of the many things, yes. Uh, now, one rider who hasn't been winning any sprints recently is Giro stage winner Alex Dowsett from Israel Startup Nation. Because at the team training camp, he said in a tweet that he was partnered up with Andre the Gorilla Greipel for some sprint practice. According to Dowsett's tweet, Greipel won the best of nine competition, 9-0. Nine yeah, fairly, fairly unanimous score. For the gorilla there, wasn't it? I yeah. wonder whether that's why Chris Froome didn't come back from the United States of America for his training camp, uh, because he'd already been pitted against Andre Greipel for the sprint practice. Well, I wouldn't come back from the States if, if I was against. <laughs> Definitely life in the old gorilla yet, though, isn't it? Well, yeah. Hang on a minute, aren't you the old gorilla? The gorilla from Ringwood. Yeah, slightly Sorry. different, that one. Subtle, Subtle distinction, distinction, yes. Yeah. Uh, lastly, some good doping news, if there ever could be such a thing. Uh, so the Austrian investigation termed Operation Andlas has resulted in criminal prosecutions, and the doctor who orchestrated it all has received a prison sentence of over five years, in addition to the rider Stefan Denefil, who got two years, and a €350,000 fine. Now, we say this is good news. Because this is the first time that we can remember consequences this severe for doping. And undoubtedly, we think it's a good thing. Previously, as humiliating as a positive test could be, the fact is that most riders could pocket the money that they got when they cheated and then carry on as normal after their ban and then make some more money when they decide to write a book about it. No, not that again. Well, no, no, no. But I do think that sporting fraud should be a criminal offence in line with other types of fraud. Agreed. I mean, if you've thought twice about doping before, you're now going to think about five times, hopefully. You would. Hack. Forward slash bodge of the week now. And the first one comes in from Cervelo. So it's already a hack from me. Except that he doesn't seem to have a Cervelo, Dan. He's got a giant. <laughs> Well, username only is a hack. But anyway, let's you decide at home. Vertical bike rack, wanted to store my bikes vertically in my apartment, but didn't want to scuff the wall and didn't want to rely on drywall anchors. I like that. I think that's very cool. That's a hack for me. It's a hack from, well, it's already a hack for me, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, uh, yeah. 97%. Wow. I mean, that is one of the most unanimous hacks for a bike stand uh, that we've had, I think, on Hacks and Bodges. It is. A lot of other people don't like screwing stuff into drywalls, clearly. There we go. Uh, right, next up, we've got this one sent in by uh, Robert O'Keefe, which is which is a thing of beauty, Dan, because it's uh, a custom-made drift made out of CNC'd aluminium um, for punching out bearings from, wow. his, uh, from his hubs uh, rather than using a block of wood. I mean, it does look nicer than a block of wood. I'd I designed, say he had it made, though. I designed and had made a custom drift out of CNC aluminium. That's all right. Is that You're right? thinking that, that it's not eligible because well, someone else I'll just has made drew something on a piece of paper and just said, can you make that for me? And then posted it. I'm not sure I'd like get a hack or bodge, right? Well, a good point. A, a big <laughs> thanks to Jim at Bearing Pro Tools as well. Yeah. Well, Jim, you get a hack from me. That's, yeah. You threw me there, mate. I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, Is that it's eligible? A hack. It's a hack. A lot of thought went into it, Robert, so I'll give you a hack as well. As did 92% of other people. Uh, so two hacks so far. You'll probably uh, find that that vertical bike stand was made by a carpenter as opposed to that person that's Cervelo yeah. that reckons he yeah. made it. I need a bike stand that I don't want it to, you know, have any of those bits in behind the plaster that you need. I don't want them tires to mark the wall. Do what you can. Cheers. Uh, next up, C. Puned. Uh, pregnancy assist riser. Uh, my wife is in her third trimester and her belly has begun to interfere with her thighs, <laughs> making riding uncomfortable, if not soon, impossible. That's happened to you, isn't it, mate? Uh, she has an integrated canyon cockpit, so flipping her bars long one wasn't an option. Uh, we, asked a, we asked a woodworking friend. 
<laughs> who then volunteered to make her a custom riser. Not, not even named, just a woodworking friend. It fits in snugly, no movement plane, is secured on the underside via latches. My wife can now continue to ride indoors, hopefully until she comes to full term. Well, Again, I, it's a hack. Yeah, I'm glad it's it's fits snugly because a professional has undertaken uh, the work. So, um, I mean, yeah, it is a hack because because someone's done it for you. <laughs> yeah, I designed a frame and I wrote to Canyon. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, well, I'll say hack it anyway. I'm feeling yeah, generous today. Absolutely. Uh, this I, next one, Dan, though, is just I'm, I'm blown away by it. This is sent in by uh, Lester Wallet. DIY Paul spring replacement in a rear hub using pieces of inner tube, which is unthinkably genius. Oh, wow. Mildly terrifying. But you know, in a rear hub where you've got your, your paws, yeah. right? And they, they're normally spring loaded, and that when you freewheel, the springs kind of kick them out. Mm. And then when you start pedaling again, they, they hit like the ratchet on the outside. They, for some reason, they, they disintegrated. Um, and so he fixed them with All six of them. an inner tube. Like, it's almost like a medical procedure. How precise <laughs> have you got to be for that? Incredible. Uh, well, how did only 66% of you say hack for that? Well, probably because 34% of people were worried that under pressure they might have slipped and then you'd go oh, over the so, handlebars, yeah. possibly well, lose I'm your sure teeth. that they were careful in riding to the bike store to get it all fixed, but wow, brilliant stuff. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Dazzledino 9. Presumably Dazzledino was already taken on the GC now. So yeah, one to eight Dazzledinos. Uh, wheels of time. The rim on my front wheel split after hitting a pothole, so I upcycled it into a clock. Just got to find an appropriate wall to hang it on. Well, I mean, it looks nice. Do you not think that every time you look at that clock, you'll think of the amount of money that went down the pothole, so to speak? Ah, see what you did there. That's an expensive clock, Dan. Well, it is. Maybe they're insurance, so they've got a replacement wheel and just thought, I don't want to chuck away the last one. Oh, that's an upside. Yeah. yeah, so actually you've got a free clock. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, okay, no, that's cool. Hack that's a me. hack from me. Yeah. Uh, and 88% of you said hack as well, yeah. uh, which means that we finish with this one from Frager, 1988. Ooh, DIY rocker plates. Do like a good rocker plate here, don't we? Uh, own build rocker plate, thank goodness, not, <laughs> not another professional one. Uh, with laptop stand and front wheel stand slash fan holder. Wow. The rocker plate allows sideways and linear movement. Oh my goodness. We could, I could go into detail here, Dan. For the linear movement, I used a shaft with bearings and springs. Uh, and for the sideways movement, two balls. <laughs> two balls and a shaft, brilliant. Well, on? I would say that is a definite hack, which means that we're lacking something this week. Bodges. Yeah. Can somebody please send in some bodges for us to take the mick out of? Well, that's it, yeah. And they could be bodges that have been undertaken by some form of professional uh, that you've paid for the, for the <laughs> yeah, work. Yeah, I'd like you to do this for me. No, that's a bodge. Uh, anyway, you can submit them all via the GSEN app, of course, and I very much look forward to seeing them again. Indeed. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bucket. All you've got to do is give us a witty caption to a photo that we're about to give you. And as always, we're going to start with the results from the last week first, where you had this photograph of Manon and Connor riding each other's bikes. Hmm. Share, which is still genius. It's a brilliant photo, isn't it? It is. Uh, the winner is Daniel Nolan, who put caption uh, man on a tiny bike, man on a giant bike. Genius. I mean, technically it's an Orbea, not a giant, but you know. Um, I'll let you off. Two, two bike name jokes in one show. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's cracking, Daniel. Get in touch and we will get your GCN Elite water bottle out to you. The photograph for this week, though, for you all to caption and then put them in the comment section down below, is this one of Jakob Fuglsang looking longingly, I should say, at his new mm. shoes. Yeah, he did, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, hence the following caption. We all wish we could find someone to look at us like Jakob Fuglsang looks at his shoes. Or, um, I'm a soul singer. Crikey, Dan. You're right, mate. Yeah, do you not like them? Uh, feel well, a bit I, mean, down, I mean, they're all right, like, you know. Hmm. Up to usual I couldn't standards. think of anything better again, uh, but I'm sure you can. So please leave your captions in the comment section down below, and I'm sure we'll have another genius option uh, to win next week. Heart and soul? No? Well, I'm not laughing at yours now. <laughs>
We've got a lot of comments to get through before we tell you what's coming up on the channel this week, so let's get started with this underneath the Bad Habits video. Uh, Lisa Rogers, I'm wondering, did the film crew know that Manon was going to sit on Connor's bike? What size of ladder did they need to bring to the shoot <laughs> if they did? A uh, massive ladder, actually. Uh, fire crew turned up to help. Extendable. Yeah, yeah. David Bristow said, uh, bad habit, loose helmet straps, Connor. I did notice that. Yeah, Come so on, we all Connor. did, didn't we? Need to up your game. Uh, Secret Brad, Ollie, when sprinting out of the saddle, looks like he is flossing on the butt. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> no, I don't know what it means. Uh, well, really helpful like video. It. It's pointed out a few of mine which I didn't realise I had. Uh, and then Alex Haley. Uh, this is an interesting one, Dan. Loving the raunchy background jazz music. Oh, right. Which kind of made me think, I mean, we don't have raunchy background jazz music on the GCN show. So perhaps, no. perhaps we can now have some the now. Time. Can we have a bit of raunchy background jazz music, please? As if by magic. No, nice. thank so you I very like much. That. Yes. Uh, right, underneath over versus underdressed, Luke Rutten put classic. Hit the climbs in winter training camp in Spain in shorts, only to find the locals wearing the same winter gear you wear at home. <laughs> I remember that so well. So My well. My first trip abroad, it was to Mallorca. It felt balmy out there. I was in shorts and short sleeves, and you see someone coming towards you, the only bit of their skin that you can see is around here somewhere. Like, what are you doing? You must be roasting. But that's it. Are they actually sweating or are they just really fit and used well, to the that's their winter, weather? isn't it? I just think that, that, you know, they have to cope with 38, 40 degrees. So that's what they do to cope with 13. There you go. Uh, Pale Blue Face said, uh, when I saw the video title, my first thought was I'd rather be cold. But then I remember the times I've actually been cold when riding my bike and quickly realised I'd rather be overdressed because if I'm hot, I can very, at the very least take a break to cool off. Mm. But being super cold on a bike is absolutely awful and quite painful. Yes, it is. Yeah, well, you can only call yourself a proper cyclist when you've been too cold on the bike and almost got hypothermia. That's right. <laughs> uh, Kimberly Sparkles, poor Hank. It's like they sit at meetings pitching concepts to torture him. Well, it seems like that because that's exactly what it's like. Yeah, the only thing about the meetings um, is that they're virtual these days uh, on, uh, on video calls, but aren't they? just as enjoyable. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, weirdly, Hank is in on those meetings, though, and often coming up with the uh, the worst things to which to subject himself to. So, uh, so yeah, it's not just... Glutton for punishment. It is, it's not just us. Uh, right, under how to keep your hands and feet warm in winter, SAF 1981. Wait for it, you know what it's going to be. Canada! This is tropical. <laughs> I commute to work in minus 20 while being chased by a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Jack Riley, 1989. I've solved this problem by moving home to Australia. It's oh. amazing how well it works and so simple too. Yeah. My word. Yeah, you, you wouldn't get cold hands and feet very often, would you really? No, Especially if you're in the right bit of Australia. Wouldn't. And you probably wouldn't get COVID-19 either at the moment, so that's an extra bonus. Yeah, they're doing well over there, aren't they? They are indeed. Mm. Right, underneath last week's show, we asked you for your most embarrassing moments, and Bolivar Fridgewater wrote in saying, getting dropped and not breaking the hour record. <laughs> Ollie's got a troll. <laughs> uh, Bolivar which, Fridgewater. A, a, a troll which we've just fed. <laughs> All right, let's get on to what's coming up on the channel this week, then starting with Wednesday, which is how to set your saddle heights. Uh, presumably not filmed at the same time as Manon and Connor were out on the uh, <laughs> opposite bikes. Each other's bikes, I say. Uh, on Thursday, we've got another video for you to follow along to over on GCN Training. It's a 40-minute high-intensity interval training session. And on Friday, how to ride on slippery roads. Um, <sighs> definitely something you need to watch if you're a cyclist in the UK. Remarkably slippery the roads around here, aren't Indeed, they? Indeed, yeah. Uh, or in Belgium, actually. Um, I think we've got a clip of someone coming up from Belgium, <laughs> haven't we? Yeah. Uh, Cheers. Twice in one show. Yeah. So generous of Flanders Classics to share the clip with us, isn't it? Thank you again, Flanders Classics. Uh, right, on Saturday, I'm super excited about this, okay? So Connor is about to embark on an eight-week training plan. You can train along with him. Um, all the training sessions are gonna be on Zwift. I mean, you can literally train al alongside him. No, not alongside him. You can train with him, you can ride with him on Zwift. But to kick things off, we actually get to see how much fitness an ex-pro loses in the year that they've been retired. I'm fascinated. This, I'm so. interested as well to see. And That's I don't it. really want to know how much you lose in nine years. Well, uh, yes, D yeah, a lot, I suspect. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we'll check that out. Also, uh, over on GCN Training, um, we've got a video about how much intensity is too much intensity, or is more hit better. 
Mm. So uh, make sure we check that one out. Uh, and then on Sunday, running versus cycling, which burns more calories? Basically, which is harder? So we'll find out. Manon is up against Heather from GTN. So uh, hopefully Manon, obviously, yeah. Uh, Been interesting one. Uh, uh, also, quick reminder that over on the GCN at Race Pass, there are some races this weekend. We had a small break actually, whilst the cyclocross season took a break. But we're back with the X2O bad camos on Saturday worldwide, except for Belgium. And on Sunday, the final round of the World Cup before the World Championships, which is available in Europe and Japan. Oh, I cannot wait for the Worlds. It's going to be amazing, isn't it? Uh, right. I think that's the end of the GCN show this week, isn't it, Dan? It is, yeah. Thank you again for watching. And if you feel generous, please click on the like thumbs up button just down below. Very generous, but thank you.